with us if you're able. Let's sing this together. Here we go. You stood outside my grave with tears still on your face. And I heard you say my name. So my night was heard today. Here we go. Because you came. I knew.
resurrection power that can save the power in your name power in your name let's sing that out would rush in, would wipe away every fear, Lord, would break off every chain, every place where anxiety has taken hold, where depression has taken hold, where sickness has taken hold, where doubts, where worry, where that fear has taken hold, Lord. None of those things are from you, and you are the miracle-working God, and that is the miracle when we get freed of those things. And so, Lord, we claim in your name, in the name of Jesus, that your love would come do the work that only it can do, that your grace would come do the work that only it could do, that your blood, that your sacrifice, that your forgiveness would come in this morning, right now, Lord. And we declare it together. Let's sing that one more time, my fear. Because my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love, my fear. Doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love, my fear. Doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Yes, lift your voices. Let's give a shout of praise. All right, let's praise God this morning before we sit down. Come on, lift it up. Lift it up in here. All right, you can grab a seat this morning. Welcome to Ocean Hills. My name's Jono, in case you missed that. Um, and uh, really, really excited to be here this morning. This is going to be an amazing morning. We are we're a family of people that gather every week, and our, our mission is really simple. It's to love everyone always and follow Jesus. And, and we figure out as we follow Jesus more and more, we get deeper into who Jesus is and what he's about. He is about loving everyone always, and he gives us the power and, and empowers us to do that as we learn about him, as we live the way he wants us to live. So that's, that's why we exist. That's why we're here. Um, if you didn't know that, if you're new with us, we want to welcome you. This is a, a really special morning. This is a unique morning. So I just want to, I want to kind of set the stage for this morning because it's different than a, a normal uh, Sunday celebration, if you will. We, we have a couple different things going on, two things that are really close to our hearts at Ocean Hill. So um, 
If you, if you leave this morning, we, we know you're going to have a great experience, but we, if you're new, we want you to come back and experience maybe a more normal Sunday at Ocean Hills, because this isn't a normal Sunday. If there, is there ever a normal Sunday? Maybe there's not ever a normal Sunday, I guess. Um, so we just want to let you know that. There's two things we're doing this morning. We have a, an amazing, ex, uh, just a way to experience um, loving our kids and celebrating that God's word is available to all of us. And as our kids get to reading age, we like to give them a Bible. So we're going to have a Bible milestone where our second graders get a Bible. We're going to celebrate that just a moment. It's an awesome, awesome thing to experience as a family. One of those rites of passages where you get your first Bible. It's really special. And then um, the second thing, we have the National Director of Team World Vision in the house today. Lindsay Dean Ratchford is here, and she's going to uh, share with a couple of us just uh, Team World Vision. Why, why are we doing this? Why do we keep doing Team World Vision, you might be thinking. So don't be scared yet. No, um, it's going to be awesome. God, you're going to be able to celebrate just what God's doing around the world. It's really amazing. So a couple things, just some housekeeping. Let me get out of the way. Uh, if you're new, could you grab your program, your, your connection card? There's a place on there to um, fill that out. Let us know who you are. We really want to connect with you. We actually have people, volunteers that stand at a stand they stand at a stand. That sounds really funny, but they do. There's a, there's a connection stand outside, and people with red shirts are out there to meet you and to tell you and help you know how to connect in this family. So if you've never gone to the connection stand, I want to encourage you. Go out there, meet somebody with a red shirt on, and uh, say, how do I connect here? What do I do? What, what's the next step for me? And they'll help walk you through that. So go do that. You can hand your connection card to them, or you can pop it in the offering boxes in the back as you walk out. There's boxes right outside the door that you can put your connection card in. You could also put a prayer request on there for us. Uh, let us know how we can pray for you, how we can celebrate or mourn or come alongside you in a hard time. So we would love to do that. Our staff loves to get those prayer requests. So fill those out for us. Um, there's a bunch of stuff on the program I'm not going to read because you guys all know how to read. And you can check those uh, things out that are coming up. Um, if you want to be part of what's happening at Ocean Hills in a deeper way, uh, we, we really love that you all support what's going on. And, and none of the ministries, programs, staff we have would exist without your generosity. So thank you. For those of you that give online, I know it's something you kind of set up and forget about, but thank you for doing that. We would encourage you to keep doing that. We had, just let me celebrate this week, we had a group of 50, yeah, 50 fifth and sixth graders gathering, and that's them in crazy costumes and just hearing about the love of God in fifth and sixth grade. Could you imagine how your life would have been changed if you heard about God's love in fifth and sixth grade? That's amazing. So please just help us continue to give generously towards our ministries, and our staff is doing such a tremendous job um, organizing and leading and, and all of that. So, um, all right. I think that's all for the housekeeping. If you want to give, let me just tell you three ways to give. We got, uh, you can text to give that are, it's up there on the screen. You can give on the boxes back there, or you can set up an online payment. You know how to do that through, um, through your bank account. So we'd love, uh, love e any of those. Thank you for that. We're going to, um, we're going to change now to the Bible milestone. And I want to welcome up Cozy Del Carlo Jenks. Cozy Jenks. Cozy works tirelessly for our children here at Ocean Hills. You guys don't get to see it. I get to see it all the time and energy. And so I just want one more time. Can we just appreciate? We don't get to do this very often. Let's appreciate Cozy. Woo! We are so thankful for your ministry and uh, what you get to share with us this morning. So bring it. Thank you, Jono. Same to you. Hi, Jono said. My name is Cozy, and I'm the children's ministry pastor here at Ocean Hills. And this is my Bible. <laughs> I love my Bible. Uh, in my Bible is a marking of moments in my life where scripture has intersected with what's going on and has changed my trajectory in big ways and in some really small ways. But I love that my Bible marks part of 
my story in with God's story. And today, um, I'm sure some of you are kind of thinking about those moments in your own life as well. And today we're celebrating the Bible. And by Bible milestone, which Jano kind of told you, is when we give our second graders their very first scripture Bible, and we pray a, pray a blessing over them. So uh, we um, are going to do that this morning. I'm very excited about it. Each week in O Kids, our kids watch a part of God's story, and there is an intro video. So as I welcome our families up, I think this intro to our story every week is the perfect thing to remind us why the Bible is so special. So families, you guys can come on up right here. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed. A little bit of an abrupt ending, but... <laughs> Not long enough for our 15 second graders to make their way up here. Let's give them a hand. We're gonna kinda have to spread out. This is my greatest joy in the whole world, is watching our kids receive their scripture Bibles. I have known some of these kids since the day they were born. So if you uh, have been here for a while, I encourage you to get to know some of our kids, invest in kids' lives. Uh, it is really special to get to see dedication all the way to this moment. So, all right, second grade friends. There are so many of you. Can you find me? Second grade friends. Can you guys look up here? I'm gonna try and talk to you for a minute. Okay, in your Bibles that you just got, you will notice that your Bible is marked. It's with, marked with a ribbon, and it's your little book marker, and that is marked on Psalm 139. And Psalm 139 is all about how God loves you so, so, so much, and how he knows you better than anyone in the whole world. He knows everything about you, and he loves you so much that he'll always be with you. You, Mr. Carl, are you here? Nope. Okay. <laughs> Got to get Carl his Bible if he's here, you know. That's the whole point. There is so much to discover in this book. You could read this book every single day for an hour for your whole life, and you would still find something new. Isn't that incredible? So incredible. But I hope that every time you open your Bible, that you hear from it, that God loves you more than you even thought possible. That is my hope for you and your Bibles. When we dedicate kids at Ocean Hills, we say a verbal commitment to continue to mentor uh, and bring them up to follow Jesus. And so we are going to echo that this morning with our parents and you all, and I'm going to ask you a question, and if you will, say we will at the end. So, Parents and God family, that's you guys, will you commit yourselves to encourage and support these second graders as they read God's word and learn how to become followers of Jesus? If you will, say we will. We will. We will. <laughs> nice enthusiasm, Liam. All right, second graders. This is for you. You're going to do the same thing, all right? Second graders, will you accept this gift of God's truth and commit to spend time reading this Bible, knowing that God wants to speak to you through his word? If you will, on the count of three, say we will. One, two, three. I think that might be the loudest one we've ever had. Good job, you guys. Now, parents and friends, we are going to spend a moment praying a blessing. Maybe we can kind of spread out a little bit over on the sides. Uh, we are going to spend a moment praying blessing over our kids, just like we do at dedication and a special moment um, in kindergarten as well. So this is being echoed again for some of the third time in some of these kids' lives. So we're going to pray that blessing. And you guys are invited to read Psalm 139, which will be, or not Psalm 139, 119, which will be up on the screen. And if you would just 
think about what the Bible has meant in your own life, and then if you're so led to actually pray this truth into the lives of these second graders. So thank you so much for entering in with us. Let's close uh, this time up in prayer together. Would you bow your heads with me? God, we are so thankful for the gift of your word. What a supernatural gift you've given us, God. Your words that share about who you are, about your love for us, about your love for all people, that tell us how to live the best way, God, that give us just what we need at the right moment. God, what a gift. We pray as these kids get this gift, it would just be unwrapped in their lives. They would just be able to, to hear your voice through the words on the pages as they grow up. God, would you, would you put these words in their hearts? Help them to be diligent, to be disciplined, to open the scriptures, and to just so want to hear your voice, Lord. So thank you for this gift. Thank you for each one of these second graders. We know that you're gonna do amazing things as you raise them up, this army of, of children that are gonna change the world, God, by hearing your voice and doing what it says. So we thank you, we praise you in your name, Jesus. And everybody said, amen. amen. All right, let's give a hand to our second graders and families and cozy, so great. We're going to invite the K through 4th graders to go right out here. There's Toby Kellogg, K through 4th, 5th through 12th. You're going to stay in. And everybody else, we're going to stand up. We're going to sing one more song together. Worship. Get ready for God to rock us, to move in us. So say hi to somebody next to you as you get ready to worship. And let's, uh, let's sing together. Okay. 
keeps no fences or wrongs in mind. Make me like Jesus. Make me like Jesus. Let's make this our prayer this morning. Let's get together. My heart is an open space for you to come and have your can have a seat. Actually, stand up for just a sec before you sit down. I'm going to have you stand for this scripture. Just out of Isaiah 58. I just, God put this on my heart this morning. I'm going to read this. Is this the kind of fast I have chosen? Only a day for people to humble themselves? Is it only for bowing one's head like a reed and lying in sackcloth and ashes? Is that what you call a fast? A day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen? To loose the chains of injustice 
and untie the cords of the yoke to set the oppressed free and break every yoke. Is, not, is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter? God, would you speak to us this morning? We want to hear your voice. Our hearts are an open space. God, do what you want to do. Say what you want to say. In your name, Jesus, amen. You can have a seat now. All right. All right, I'm John. I'm one of the pastors here, and uh, normally John would be up here this morning. Unfortunately, John called us, and uh, he has the flu. He had fever and chills, and uh, it uh, is, believe it or not, in 20 years of this church, the first time John has ever missed a Sunday because he's been sick. Isn't that crazy? So we can praise God for his amazing health, the 20 years of health, but uh, we can continue to pray for his healing. And so I'm just up here pinch hitting. I'm not going to be long because we have some other guest speakers. So it's, uh, it's going to be great. It's going to be an awesome morning. And we're starting a series called Why? Why? Why do we do the things we do? We, we need to ask ourselves this, right? As, as Christians, why, do, why are we doing church? Why are we doing this team world vision thing again for the seventh year? You might have some compassion fatigue. and be like, man, I've heard about team world vision. I, for seven years, I've heard about it. It's uh, why are we doing this? So we want to remind you today why we're doing it. And uh, we hope that God speaks to you. And if you've never been a part of it, we, and maybe you have been a part of it, we want to we wanna ask you to jump in again. We're just going to be uh, super clear about that. Our, our hope is that you would respond in some way today to what God puts on your heart. Okay, so why are we doing this? We're doing this because there, there are millions of kids and families without water, and you're going to hear about the need in a little bit. We're doing it because the, it's not finished. The work is not yet completed Amen. It's not completed in us, and it's not completed in the world. And so God is calling us to make an impact in this world. That's why he has put this church together, this family together, to make an impact. We have, in the last seven years, raised over $770,000 for clean water. Can we just praise God for a minute? That is so incredible. That's 15,400 people. And... Uh, for four years, um, 15,400 people that have clean water that did not previously have clean water because of this congregation and your efforts. Let me just be really clear about that. That's incredible. I'm so excited about that. But I, I think God's not done yet, right? He's not done with us. He's not done with what he wants to do in and through us. And, and like many of you, I sat there for four years the first four years of Team World Vision, and I was like, I hate running. I'm not a runner. I am a swimmer. I, I'm a water polo player. I like being in the ocean. And this land stuff is not for me. And they can do that running thing for four years. And then a couple years ago, God put it on my heart to, to step off the cliff and jump in and say yes. And I got to tell you, it has been a life-changing experience for me. and my family, to be part of this movement. It's, it is powerful, and God used it in so many ways to bring us closer together as a family, to reconnect me to old friends, to watch God just provide resources and fundraising and stuff that I just couldn't do on my own, and to give me the strength and the energy to keep going. And Gosh, I learned so much. I, I think one of the lessons that, that I'll never forget is just the, the pain of absorbing other people's pain, the, the suffering that you go through. And, and this, is, this is an awesome recruiting job right now, I understand. But the, uh, the, it, <laughs> there's a lot of joy in it, too. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, right? The joy set before him. Jesus. That's why he did it. He knew it was going to bring joy. And, and I, I, I knew that, but I had to test it for myself. And it's true. Absorbing other people's pain brings joy in your life. It will. 
And you're going to hear some stories about that today. You're going you're gonna to just be challenged to, do, do I believe that? Do I believe what Jesus did on that cross, absorbing all our pain, all our suffering, that I'm actually called into that somehow in my life? Am I called into absorbing other people's pain? So we're gonna, I'm going to bring Casey out first because her story is so powerful. And then we're going to hear from Lindsay. And uh, Casey's agreed to share her incredible story of how God called her into this. You want to use this mic? Oh, my gosh. No, yeah, you got one. Perfect. All right. I'll let you do it. It's weird to be out here. I'm like, comfortable back there? Not so much out here. Let's pray. I need to pray. Will you pray with me? Mm. Lord, will you give me the words to say? Let them be your words and not mine. Would you help me to do honor to the story that you have given me because it's your story? And Lord, would you open all of our hearts and ears to listen and hear your voice and have the courage to respond? In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Well, that's where my story... Oh, this is super loud. Um, thank you. That's where my story started, actually, with the word listen. I typically hear the last five years have been picking a word for the year, a word that I would lean into and kind of saw as maybe a growth edge. And the word listen came to me when I was reading in Psalm 27, 8. I think it's up on the screen. It said, my heart has heard you say, come and talk with me. And my heart responds, Lord, I am coming. And that just hit me like a ton of bricks. I was like, I want a heart that responds to God like that. I want to be able to hear God say, come and talk to me. And so I began to sink into that, and I chose that word as listen for my uh, word of the year. And the more that I leaned into it, the more that I realized if I'm listening to God and I'm expecting him to speak to me, I better be ready to know what I'm going to do if he actually speaks. <laughs> scary thought. And so um, I began to pray this prayer that was a very scary prayer, actually. It was, Lord, what is my next step of obedience? Because I knew that if God spoke, I wanted to obey. I wanted to respond. I wanted to say yes. And so that is where I was in October of 2017 when I came into this church on Team World Vision Sunday. I had been leaning into listening and what does it look like to obey when God speaks. Now, I have to say, I was like Jono. I had been here for four years previous. Not my thing. I knew, like, this is not something God's going to call me to do. I hate running. I love sleeping. <laughs> Like, the, the Saturday morning runs, that is not going to work for me. Um, I think I'd maybe run consecutively two miles in a row in my whole life ever. And so I just thought, God wouldn't call me to do this thing that is so outside of my capabilities. Um, and I had seen friends just get totally wrecked by the cause, and I was jealous of that. I, I saw them, um, some of my best friends have been just wrecked by seeing these kids struggle to get clean water and God had moved in them and it was working through them and I was cheering them on and I was giving my money, but still that moment had never happened for me and I think I, I expected that that was what was supposed to happen. Like it had to be this emotional experience. And so I left that Sunday, I did not come forward. Um, however, I had been in this season of listening and as John often says, notice what you notice. Um, I was noticing that there was a lot of conversations coming up about this. I was thinking about it more. It kept popping into my mind um, all after church on Sunday. So many people, I'm thinking of running. Are you going to run? What do you think? Should we run? I mean, it was, I was like, ah. Um, and then Monday night at Life Group, same thing. So I went to bed Monday night and woke up on Tuesday morning having had this really vivid dream about me running on a Saturday morning with Team World Vision. So that's like shocker, number one. And there were the kids with the jugs of water, you know, walking next to us. And I was kind of rattled when I woke up. And I heard God say from that psalm, come and talk to me about it. I was like, oh, super early. I'm making my way to the living room. And I don't know if it's because I was super tired or just in a sassy mood. I was talking to Jesus and I was saying, okay, Lord, this keeps coming up. We need to decide this this morning. Like, when I'm done with my quiet time with you, I want a yes or a no, okay? It's like, all right, Lord. 
And then I went even a step further, and this is not something I usually do, and I don't recommend it, but um, I said, okay, God, if I'm supposed to do this, will you just put the word run in any of the Bible pas passages that I read? Or any, <laughs> I know, I know, not best practices, but God is, God is super kind, and I think he has a sense of humor too. So, so I went out and I sit down and I end up in Lamentations and I'm reading these passages and it is all about how God's people are just in these devastating circumstances. They don't have water to drink. The women are getting molested and raped and I mean, it's just all over. It's literally the same thing that I had just heard on Sunday morning about what was happening in Africa and the DR Congo. So these are literally the passages the phrases that are popping out to me. The parched tongues of their little ones stick to the roofs of their mouths in thirst. We have, we have to pay for water to drink. Boys stagger under heavy loads. I mean, it was obvious, right? And I would like to say that I, was, uh, that I heard God's voice in that moment, and I said, yes, I'm going to do it. But I didn't. I was like, there's not the word run in any of this passage. <laughs> yeah. So... Like, literally, this is so embarrassing to even say that. But So I, I continue, and the next uh, book that I'm reading is actually a book on the Sabbath. And I literally had the thought, oh, this is safe. This is a book on rest. There's not going to be any running in here. <laughs> Very slow on the uptake. So I open it up, and the second paragraph in, there it is, the word run. One sentence later, there it is again, the word run. One more time in the same paragraph, three times. There's the words run. <laughs> I was like, okay, Lord, you are so kind to even answer this ridiculous request, and I am going to say yes to you. I immediately told my husband, emailed the team captains, because I knew I was going to chicken out if I didn't. It's like God just told me very clearly that I was supposed to run this marathon. And I have to say in that moment, it was completely and only about obedience, I was saying yes. I did not understand how I was going to do this. Um, I did not feel that, you know, heart experience, emotion happening yet. Um, but I chose to be obedient, and um, God just swooped in and did the rest. And so, long story short, I did run the LA Marathon. I did not die. <laughs> It was an amazing experience, and I can tell you all about all of that stuff later, but I wanted to just uh, impart to you some things that I learned in the process. Um, one, that obedience is the path towards transformation. At least it has been in my life. I can point to multiple times when, especially in those moments where I'm looking at this mountain that God wants me to climb, and there's a ton of fear, and there's a ton of inadequacy, and like I'm incapable and I don't have the tools that I need and I don't understand how it's supposed to happen, but he's clearly asking me to do it. And like Jonna said, I jump off the cliff. And those are the times when my faith is increased, my heart is transformed, he shows up in just huge and crazy ways. And, and I think that's kind of the point is that God gets to show off in those moments because it's so obviously not about me. Like there's no way that I can just gut it out on my own he gets to get all the glory, and it's super easy to just point back to him. So that's number one. Uh, number two, I learned that he always gives us everything we need to do what he has asked us to do. He is so kind, you guys. He doesn't leave us high and dry. He doesn't ask us to do something or jump off a cliff and then not give us the parachute, you know, or not give us the safe landing. Um, He's with us right there in it, but he's wanting us to take that first step. So you can count on that, that he's going to give you what you need if he's calling you to do it. And not only what you need, but more than what you need. That's my third point, that he is a God of abundance. He is so much bigger, like John says every week, so much bigger and better than you think. And it is so true, and I think we get to see that when we take a leap of faith, when we take that step, and we don't know where where what we need is going to come from, it has to come from him. Um, and then finally, I learned so much about community. I think doing hard things together is so formative. It breaks down walls between us. It paves the way for vulnerability, for connection. And as if that weren't enough, doing hard things together for the kingdom is like 
just blow me out of the water. I mean, we get a chance to participate in making something right that is very, very wrong. And that is kingdom work. I mean, that's here and now, heaven on earth, God's kingdom come. We want to restore what is broken in Africa. And we get a chance to do that by just saying yes. And we don't have to do it by ourselves. I mean, it's impossible to do it by ourselves, but getting to do it together, it's like we are, we are stronger together. So that's like the, <laughs> the motto, right? So, <laughs> so I can honestly say my yes to run the LA Marathon for Clean Water changed me. That is my testimony. I ran to be obedient, and I do think that is enough, but I think our God is so good that he doesn't just care about us checking boxes for the sake of checking boxes. He actually wants to use these moments of obedience to transform us and to transform other people in the process. So my prayer is that you might be open, hard as an open space, to listen this morning, listen for his voice, and maybe make a decision that you're going to obey him with whatever he says. And it may not be the marathon. It may be something else that he's calling you to do. But I do think God is speaking, and he's waiting for us to be obedient to, to his voice. So thank you. Thanks. Thanks for letting me share. I'm going to, Lindsay's going to come up next, but watch this little video before she comes. I remember hearing about the global water crisis for the first time. I could have shut down, been numb by it. The issue was too big. Someone else would do something about it. But God was calling me to be broken by the global water crisis, to do something, to be awakened and activated, to move my feet and run a marathon to change the course of a child's life and the course of mine. But was it for me? I'm not a runner. Marathons? Fundraising? That's just not me. I'm not a runner. I'm not somebody who does athletic events. Or is this opportunity for me? Could I maybe, just maybe, say yes? When we say yes to God's crazy invitations, boldly trusting in his faithfulness, he does amazing things. Because on the other side of yes is water and fullness of life, and God has something in it for you. And believe it or not, this is gonna be fun. Because this isn't just running. This isn't just water. This is the church. This is the body of Christ coming together to love and serve the least of these brothers and sisters of ours to see and experience God's transformational power. This is a revival. Will you join us? Good morning. Good morning, Ocean Hills. Man, I didn't expect that one to get me. <laughs> Friends, we're part of heaven right here on earth. Right now, there are these thin spaces, right? Have you heard about the thin spaces where it's the world and it's Jesus and it's God and it's really thin and you can feel that we're part of something so much more? And Ephesians, right, says, to him who can do immeasurably more than all that we could ask or imagine, according to his power already at work, where? In us. His power already at work in us, in me, in you. That is the kingdom right here on earth. Like our sister just testified, he will give us all the things that we need to do if he has called us to do it. Amen. Give me an amen. Come on. Because we got to claim those truths in our lives today, in the here, in the now, and step into those thin spaces because God is pressing into this world saying, I am not done yet. And there's more to be done, and I'm going to do it through you. Together, that our God goes before us and behind us and right next to us. And guys, the first time I was asked, will you join me? I said, no, <laughs> N-O, 
Because my friend Sarah from college called me. She's well over 300 pounds. She called me and asked me to run a half marathon with her. And I said, no. I said, I'll give you my bed. I will be your water station. I will bring you all the things that you need. But I have no interest in running a half marathon. Not to mention that for years prior to that, three years prior to that, I had had these awful back problems, which I still chronically suffer from today. I was on bed rest multiple times, and I, uh, it took all the energy in my body that I had to be able to move my feet just back and forth. There was no way I could run a half marathon, let alone enthusiastically say yes to Sarah. And she broke it down for me, y'all. She was engaged to this guy, they had bought a house, they were getting married, she found out that he was cheating on her and that everything she thought was true was not. And she said, Lindsay, I need a friend and a goal to get out of bed in the morning. And I choose you. So I said, yes, very quietly. <laughs> and I went out and I moved my feet for 20 minutes, just walked 20 minutes that next day. And I got myself together and I jogged 20 minutes the next day. And then I went to the gym on the third day and pulled around on some things and made it look like I kind of knew what I was doing. But here's the thing, in that period of time when I said yes, Sarah was in Michigan and I was in Pasadena and together we trained far apart and it wasn't what God did in, it wasn't the miles that changed my life, but what God did in those miles that transformed me. And like you heard earlier, I was left when I crossed that finish line with this question of God, if I can do this, what else do I have capacity to do? Amen. And nine months later, I met a crazy dude that a lot of you all know named John Huddle. And he asked me my story, and I told him about Sarah, and he said, what if I tell you that those miles that changed your life could literally save lives in Africa? And he started telling me about Ava, his 10-year-old sponsored child that walked a, three times a day, a 10K a day, three times a day, 30 kilometers, my friends. 15 of them with a jerry can on her back. Can you grab that, Jono? It's not full, so we can. Guys, this is 50 pounds when you fill this thing up and you put it on your back. 10 years old, she'd fill this thing as much as she could three times a day. There was no time for school. There's no time for fun. And the water that she's putting in this can, we wouldn't wash our cars with. And they're cooking with it and cleaning with it. They're bathing in it. We wouldn't wash our cars with it. And that was her life at 10 years old. And he said one day in the mail, he got a picture of Ava with a Swahili textbook. And he knew the walk was over. Because if she's in school, that means that she has clean water. But friends, if that's not enough, when Ava's going out to get clean water, that source is the top source of human trafficking on the planet. Kids fight off animal attacks to get this water from a dirty swamp or a riverbed. But it's not just that. I mean, World Vision, number one provider of clean water on the planet by the grace of God, right? $50 is sustainable clean water for one person's life. And that's through a gravity-fed pipeline, a solar-powered pump. I mean, unbelievable filtration systems. This is genius brain science type of work. I mean, it is unbelievable what people are able to do just through $50, one gift at a time that pulls together so that over 700,000 can be raised, so over 15,000 people can have clean water. This is large-scale sustainable development that is not a hand out, but a hand up, amen? Because that's the way Jesus does his work in his kingdom, amen? Hand up, not a hand out, so that we can live not just life, but life to the full, amen? But here's what I want you to think about. I want you to take it a step further. I want you to think about schools. I want you to think about hospitals. The need for clean water isn't just about one person walking for miles and miles and hours and hours a day. There's a hospital in Congo right outside of the area that you all do your work. And people inside Gamena, the Ledia ADP project, saw this hospital and they recognized that this hospital serves 68,000 people and it has water three days a week for one hour a day. And when I heard that story, it got real personal because my husband and I just had our first little girl. She's 11 months old next week. And then I had lunch 
with uh, the Hammonds yesterday, and I saw Brianna and baby Sutton and that beautiful, beautiful little life, and I thought, what if we were in that hospital? 50% of hospitals in Africa right now don't have running water or soap. In childbirth, the thing that brings life, births life into the world, is the number one killer of women on the planet. And it's just because of water and sanitation and hygiene. And my friends, that hospital that I just told you about, there is a project that's in progress right now to fully fund that hospital so that it has clean water 24 hours a day, seven days a week, so that all can experience the fullness of life. Amen? We have done that work together. We have done that work together. But my question to you is, is it good enough? Is that good enough for God, that one hospital? Or does he want them all? And would you go to that hospital? Because the reality is we're here and they're there. But if we were there, that would be our story. And that is not God's story. That is not the story that he has written. He has written one of life. So my friends, as Jono and I were praying about what does this 2020 season of Team World Vision look like for Ocean Hills? What could it look like in this 2020 year? I'll tell you that I had a scary prayer revelation because <laughs> I heard 20,000. And I said, Lord, that's a million dollars. You want me to stand in front of these folks and tell them that we're going to get 20,000 kids clean water and we're going to raise a million dollars? And he said, yes. Because here's the reality, my friends. You, in your faithfulness, moving one foot in front of the other for the last six years, on this seventh year, that holy number year of Team World Vision, right here through Ocean Hills, I believe, and we believe, and I talked to Brianna yesterday, and I said, I got this crazy prayer in my gut, and I know I'm supposed to share it. Without a flinch, she said, that's it. That this is the year. This is the year that Ocean Hills hits a million and celebrates 20,000 people with sustainable clean water for life. Come on. 2020, LA Marathon, Ocean Hills, 20,000 kids with clean water for life. And here's the thing. If we've got the 20s rolling, guess what? Say 20. Because training starts with 20 minutes. It's designed for a couch potato. We have a couch to course plan that will take you out of your couch to the course and you can go back to the couch if you want. But it starts next Saturday with that 20 minutes. And if you all are saying that 20 minutes, come on, Lindsay, then you can start with three miles and you can take on the full marathon. Starting next Saturday, we gather together. And when we are together, we do go farther together and God transforms us together because he always has more than what we could ask. That Ephesians prayer, he does more than we could ask or imagine. It's because we have to step into something we don't think we can do so we can see God do it, amen? We have to be willing to step out of our comfort zones, but more so step into obedience because there's always someone on the other side of our obedience. So friends, I'm asking you if God is whispering into your ear, you can do this. And even if you're hearing a really nasty yell on this side, <laughs> that you might be crazy. I pray that you quiet, quiet that yell and that you grab a hold of that whisper and you come right here to the front of this theater right after the service because we're going to rise up and we're going to move our feet nice and slow in an obedient, faithful direction so that we can celebrate 20,000 children in 2020 with clean water for the rest of their lives. Amen? Amen. So right after the service, come on down. We're going to answer all your questions, and um, we're going to see what God has in store for us. Thanks so much. Talk about the side. Thank you so much, Lindsay. Let's, let's say a prayer together. Would you bow your heads with me, and let's ask God to just solidify what... What is on our hearts? What is he saying? What's he speaking? What's one thing you heard today that God is just putting on your heart in this moment? God, we're so grateful to be invited into your family and to be invited into your mission, God, mm. to bring heaven to earth. Mm. Thank you. Mm. 
for letting us partner with you. What a joy it is. And I, I just pray, whatever you're speaking to people's hearts right now, God, you would just, uh, you would solidify it. You would toss out all fear, God, that, that your love would just cover that, that you're going to, exactly what Casey said, you're going to take care mm -hmm. of whatever you're calling people to. You're going to provide in every way abundantly. So we just step out in faith. God, we thank you. We step out in faith today. We want to obey you. Thank you for what you've let us experience this morning. And we just make a commitment to take that next step of obedience towards you. And just with our, with our heads bowed and our eyes closed, if, if you sense God just saying, I, I, I think God's calling me to this, to the half marathon or to the marathon or to the cycle team or to help out in some way, bring clean water to kids. Would you just put your hand up this morning just as a, as a commitment, saying, I want to be a part of what you're doing, God. Amen. So, God, we just seal these commitments to you. We, we thank you for calling us out for, as we step off the cliff, for just catching us in your grace and your love and your mercy. And we pray, Lord, for this dream, for 20,000 children. We pray for this dream to come through, to come true. In your time, in your world, God, in your kingdom, would you bring it this year? God, thank you so much for what you're doing. We pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen, you guys. Well, thank you so much for being a part of this morning. We are having just some next steps. We have some, some sign-up sheets here. We got some pencils down here. We're going to um, dismiss people to, uh, if you want to go out and have some coffee and hang out outside, that's great. If you raise your hand, you want to commit to this and be a part of this, we want to have you come up front. If you're just even, even interested at all, maybe you weren't ready to commit, you just want to hear more, this is just a quick seven to ten minute meeting about how to get started and and find out more so if that's you want we want you to come down and be in this section right here we fill all these rows up and we're excited for this team to launch and uh, we are are so thankful you were here to be with us today let's give lindsay one more uh, thanks sir and casey thank you for sharing your heart with us all right, all right. and uh, we like to say god is good all the time all right, he's better than you think. So come on down if you're ready. And if you want to go out and hang out, go out and hang out.